biggest background too. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us this morning for the Notre Dame baseball and Notre Dame softball media availability. We'll first start with baseball and head coach Link Jarrett will make an opening statement and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach. Hey there. Uh, good morning. Uh, excited to talk baseball a little bit. Um, on my mind right now is first of all, we got through our fall and had a very competitive, complete fall schedule uh, you know obviously no outside teams but we got to do all of our practices and all of our workouts and with a bunch of new players that was very important you know we, we got to implement a lot of our foundation last year but with such a drastically shortened season you needed this fall to be productive and I felt like it was um, the transition to add two more ACC series is very interesting when you look at it I think six of the the teams that we will play in weekend series have been in the College World Series in the last decade. So you understand the magnitude of essentially, you're playing a super regional caliber series, the bulk of our entire season, which is unique, um, gonna be very exciting, very challenging. Um, so that's, that's what's in play right now. You guys see the ACC schedule, the rest of our schedule is very close to being done. Um, you know, we're scheduled to open our season at LSU, and that's in a little tournament. So we'll play um, Louisiana Tech, LSU, and Air Force one time each. That's what's on paper right now. Um, strengths and weaknesses of our team, as I see it, pitching depth is a strength. Uh, we have eight left-handed pitchers. Anybody would love to have it. You know, we have it. I, I think piggybacking onto that, there's not tremendous starting elite caliber stuff. Tommy Sheehan, probably the most elite on the front end of that rotation with pure stuff. Um, but we have plenty of options. So how we manage our bullpen matchups is going to be very critical this year. Catching depth, I think we've improved that position overall. Um, that, was, that was something last year that I felt was not a strength of our team was just the the actual ability to function at that position or the, uh, the number of guys we had available to play the position. So we've upgraded everything we're doing there. Um, we have left-handed bats that can catch. We've got Dave Lamana back as an experienced right-handed bat. The more catching options you have, the more pinch running, pinch hitting you can do in that position. It just gives you coverage in case of injury or those guys getting beat up. So that's a strength. Um, you know, and we have some offensive variety. I feel like we have uh, some power production. I feel like we have some speed, but inside of the speed, I think we have guys that understand how to run the bases and that, that gives you some variety in the playbook. So I think when you see our offensive team, you know, you'll see different type personnel and we have a mix of right-handed hitters, left-handed hitters, switch hitters, which is always something you like as, as a coach. Um, infield depth, not a tremendous amount of infield depth. And, and then, you know, infield experience at a position, specifically their positions is a little bit of a weakness. We still have some guys that need some innings under their belt at the infield positions they're playing. Um, we're doing that the best we can in the preseason, did it in the fall, and they're starting to mature and settle into those areas. I, I still think our team defense needs to be uh, a target for us in the last couple of weeks of the preseason, just to, to fine tune some of the details of our team defense. Um, that in a nutshell is, is kind of how I see our team right now shaping up. I'll answer any questions that you guys have and we can dive a little bit deeper into the pitching or the, or the personnel as we go. All right, with that, we'll open it up to questions. If you do have a question, please go ahead and use the raise hand function. We'll go first to Pete Byrne. Hey, Link, good to see you. It's been a long time since we've had a chance to talk a little baseball. Um, How's it been, Pete? Good to talk to you. Likewise. You guys got off to such a great start last season, and, and I know that there was just a lot of enthusiasm kind of immediately injected into your program as a result, and then obviously it all shuts down. Do, do you feel like momentum can carry over over a course of 12 months, or do you feel like you're kind of starting over again this year? Well, thank goodness, Pete, this happened this year and not last year. You know, I, I think part of the momentum is the, is the philosophy and the understanding of what you're trying to do. 
And, you know, momentum rides on your ability to play consistently within the, the talent that you have. And I expect that to continue. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited that we have a lot of our guys back. Um, I'm very fortunate to have gotten the foundation of what we're doing in place last year. And, and now it's just getting to know, you know, from a coaching staff standpoint, getting to know what each of the players needs to try to continue to develop and improve. Um, we lost some weapons, no doubt about it, but we have, a, we have a lot back. I mean, I think overall, this is probably the most talented college baseball will ever be, has ever been, because there's a lot of programs that have players back that probably would have been drafted had, had the draft played out as it normally would. But, like, I like our momentum. The guys are, are confident about what's going on. Um, and, you know, it did – hurt to have to stop in the middle of what was going on, no question. But, you know, thank goodness we got into it a little bit and got a taste of what we were trying to do with the program and with the personnel and um, kind of the playbook and, and how to manage the staff. So hopefully we can pick up and just and continue rolling. Obviously a tough schedule, but that's the way it's going to be. And, and our guys are experienced and I feel like we're ready for it. Our next question comes from the chat from Todd Burledge. He says, it seems like forever ago that the start to the 2020 season was shut down. What did you do to keep the guys engaged during the extended downtime? Well, you know, we, we had a lot of discussions with the guys on, you know, kind of what the new normal was going to become um, to prepare them for, for coming back in the fall. And these guys can tell you, I mean, they're sitting right here with me. It's, it's a different world in terms of the locker room and getting through these tests and being safe away from our team function. So that, that was probably the engagement that needed to happen the most. And then the significance of having a full fall um, as we scheduled it and planned it and really didn't have to stop, I thought that was huge for our program, especially in a period of time where we're still implementing our system. So um, the engagement was around staying safe, staying healthy. What's this going to look like when you come back? How are we going to get through the fall? And then, you know, how do we build uh, to prepare for the preseason and a shifted academic calendar and just a whole new normal? And, and I think our guys have really handled that as well as any program in the country. All right, we'll go next to Mark Skoll. Hey, Coach. Uh, good to see you. Um, wanted to know what your protocols are for COVID and how you guys are handling everything. And then, two, obviously the season was cut short. Does it at all feel like it's your first season again? Like, did it even feel like you – I mean, I know you talked about laying the foundation, but you didn't get that full season in. Does it still kind of feel like it's your first go about it here with at Notre Dame? Mark, it, it really doesn't. I guess the one thing I, I missed was playing at home and um, getting the flow of the timeline at home and, you know, how you go through your day for home games. Um, it doesn't feel like this is my first year. There, there's so much more familiarity with everything going on around me right now. So, um, you know, th thank goodness this happened, COVID stuff, this year and not last year. Um, the biggest difference for me in, in our baseball world is the locker room protocol. And it's very tough that there's capacity in that locker room that we abide by. You know, there's, I think 15 people is the maximum we can have in that space. And when you have 40 players, you know, staging the dressing and the undressing is a little tricky. These guys, <laughs> they understand it's tricky. The, the locker room in baseball has always been really, for, even for me, one of the most enjoyable areas and totally different now. We've got one of the nicest team lounge areas in college baseball, and it has essentially been no more than a staging area. So those are the things that we're dealing with. And again, I think our guys' ability to manage it has kept them healthy and allowed our team to practice without pause. So um, when we get into travel and weekly testing and the results of that, uh, we just haven't gotten to that yet. You know, you'll get those test results back Thursday morning. We travel six Thursday afternoons. So 
how those tests come back and, and sorting out any issue as a result of that, that's going to be something that none of us have ever dealt with and who can get on that bus and who can't. And if you have to make a change to the travel party, making it right before you drive to the airports, it's going to be a little unique. So um, Scott Stansberry, our trainer, has, has been on these guys wearing the masks, you know, how you handle the water bottles, where we go when we're in Loftus, the locker room, the dugout. It's just totally new. So, so the protocol, I guess, to me, still revolve around the facility. And um, in games, you're going to see guys wearing masks, umpires in masks. It's, um, it's just going to be the way we have to adapt. And, and we haven't seen it yet in college baseball. Like, we haven't gotten to the starting gate to really see what these games look like. But I can tell you the locker room, the lounge, the weight room, the dugouts, it's, it's different. Our guys have handled it really well. We'll go next to Andrew Mentok. Wonder if you could talk a little bit about, um, I guess, structuring your your off season workouts and, and kind of even getting going at this time of year. Um, I know you're very meticulous in how you think things through and, and what you plan, um, but I wonder how maybe things have been different. Um, you know, if you can maybe work out with less fewer guys at one time and maybe. Um, especially going back to the fall, I, I assume some guys didn't get as much work over the summer playing games as they might have. So if you had to kind of structure things differently um, to maybe shake off the rust or things of that nature. Yeah, you know, Andrew, I think we probably were a little easier on the front end of our skill work just to make sure the arms and legs were, were in shape. I probably didn't do quite as much throwing with the position players early in either semester. Um, each player really has a set of uh, drills designed for them that they do when they're away and, and their dedication to finding areas to do their work is it's on them and they came back in shape there, there was really no chink in the armor in terms of guys coming back not ready to go but we gave them the information we felt like they needed um, the biggest concern in our sport is obviously the preparation of the, the pitchers and their arms and their health and building them up, you know, like in a major league spring training setting, those guys incrementally build their pitch counts. And we have to do the same thing. Um, we're relying on them to come in maybe a little bit more prepared than like a major league starting pitcher would entering spring training because they have a little bit longer calendar to work with in their preseason. Um, but I thought our guys were very prepared. We lost Vale along the way in, in his first bullpen back, that the Tommy John. Those are things that, unfortunately, we deal with in our sport. Um, you know, we, we have plenty of depth. You hate to lose anybody. Uh, he was a valuable piece of what we were doing. But I, I think our guys came in very prepared and were absolutely on point with our preparation, especially for the, for the pitching. We're up to three inning stints for the starters. And, you know, that there'll be a group today at three innings, a group tomorrow, and then a group on Sunday that all throw three innings. And then we, we design our relief outings. At this point, we start to expand a few of the guys into multiple inning stints and then bounce them back for a one inning stint just so they ultimately build their pitch count. They just do it in two different outings as opposed to the starters. We'll go next to Mark Skoll. Hey, Coach, a couple of local guys on the team, obviously Nico, and then you got the young guys, uh, Ryan and Brady. Just can, what can you tell me about each of those guys and what they can bring to the team this year? Well, you know, we've seen Nico game-changing ability. One swing of the bat, you know, every time he's at the plate, it's a game-changing type power to all fields that you just rarely see at this level. So we need his at-bats. Uh, to be competitive and consistent. And, you know, I think we have pieces around him that add some dimensions with base running and maybe give him an opportunity to get more pitches to hit. Um, so we expect, obviously, another big season from him. Um, Lynch and Brady, they're, they're young. They're learning what this is like at this level, the day-in, day-out competitiveness of playing against guys that are older. Um, there's a learning curve there. Those guys both come out every day completely engaged in what we're doing. Each of them in their own right has progress that they need to make. They're capable of competing at this level, but with the group around them and, and the age of some of these guys, they're learning 
how challenging it is to step in and, and compete at the upper levels of college baseball. And if your program is where it should be, that's how it should be for all the freshmen. And we talk, I talked to the guys the other day about this should challenge you every time we go onto the field. And I think they're experiencing that. Our other freshmen, Brock Murtha, Danny Neerai, some of the other young guys that are going to step in there and contribute, they're learning that every day is, is so competitive and it demands your mental and physical best every time you step on the field. So Lynch and, and Brady Gump are in that boat. They're, they're, they're learning what this is about. They have physical talent. It's just now a matter of consistency and, and grasping what it is that they can do to help our program and, and get them onto the field. All right, and with that, we will wrap it up with you, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, guys. And we'll continue with pitcher Tommy Sheehan. So if you do have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand. All right, we'll continue with Tommy Sheehan. So if you do have a question, please go ahead and use that raise hand function. We'll start first with Mark Skoll. Hi, Tommy. Uh, just want to know how excited are you to finally play some baseball, to play uh, the season? Obviously, last year was cut short. What does it mean for you and the program to finally uh, get out there again? Yeah, after the way uh, last season got cut short and how well we were doing, we're, uh, we're all definitely excited to get back out there. Um, Got a really good team, a lot of guys coming back, uh, some good newcomers. So we're ready to uh, go get at it and go compete with uh, the best out there. All right, and we'll go next to a question from the chat. This will be your third season in the rotation. Has your mindset changed at all now that you know the rigors of going through two full seasons of ACC play? Um, not so much, no. It's, it's kind of just adapting week by week. Um, just play, playing different teams, different competition. Um, Got to come up with a new game plan every week. So playing a lot of good good competition every week. So got to come with your best uh, week in and week out. Um, you're not going to face a team that's that's going to be easy on you. So I think uh, just the, the solid level of competition is the biggest thing you got to get ready for. And another one from the chat. How is the anticipation for you to get back on the field since it's been almost 11 months since you played? Uh, it, it feels like even longer than that. So we're uh, we're all really excited. Um, being inside in the preseason uh, makes you even more excited to get out there. So we're uh, we're coaches getting us ready, and uh, I think we'll be we'll be ready by by the time uh, first pitch comes at LSU. All right, we'll go next to Andrew Mentok. Um, Coach Jarrett talked a little bit about the importance of like the preparation for the pitchers, especially during this this unprecedented time. Can you talk maybe a little bit about these last, um, I guess, eleven or ten or eleven months? Just kind of kind of working to stay ready, keeping your arm healthy, and, and I assume maybe you went some longer than normal stretches without facing live batters and things like that. Yeah, it's been totally different for all of us. So kind of a uh adapting to the new new schedule. Uh, we had a longer break than usual. So being away for the t from the team for longer makes you uh, do some different things. So mostly for the pitchers is, is really important. Um, just staying on top of conditioning the arm um, and just 
getting ready for whatever the coaches ask of us is going to be big for all of us. And there's another question from the chat from Mark Skoll. What is your mentality on the mound? Uh, first of all, just, just try to go out there and have fun. Um, that's a big thing for me. And then just being confident uh, against whoever I'm up against, whether it's the number one team in the country or or anyone else. Um, I think being confident and being aggressive on the mound is the biggest thing for me and uh, what helps me succeed the most. And another from Mark School in the chat. What have you liked about the culture Coach Jarrett has established over the last year? It's been great. Um, from the first day of practice last year, you could see he brought a, a, a great level of energy to, to every practice. And you can tell he really knows his stuff about, about hitting and pitching. So it's been, it's been great to be around a mind like his who knows about winning and has, has brought that, that kind of culture into our program, which uh, I think was needed. And uh, it carried over last year with our record. And uh, hopefully we can carry that into this year um, and keep on winning games. And the last one from Mark School. What has it been like dealing with the COVID protocols? Um, it's been tough. Uh, wearing masks during during practice and games is is unusual and uh, something you got to get used to. And uh, that locker room part too is something you got to get used to. Not being around all the guys is is kind of a way you you build culture for your team. So you kind of got to adjust and and do that in different ways, but. Um, once we're all out on the field together, it's that's kind of the new, the new way to do that now. So um, those are the, the main things that have uh, been a big adjustment for all of us, um, and it'll and it'll be the, that way for a while. So got to kind of make it a new normal and uh, just get used to it. All right, we will wrap it up with you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and continue with Nico Cavadas. So if you do have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand. And we'll go first to Mark Skoll. Hi, Nico. Uh, just what's the excitement level to finally be out there getting ready to for the season after what happened last year? Yeah, um, us turning the bus around at Louisville is still really fresh in all of our minds. Um, we were playing so well. Uh, at the time and we were really ready to go out and continue to make a statement in the ACC and I think uh, you've seen that carry over into our, our focus and our intensity and in practice so I think everyone's really focused and really excited and ready to go make our name a name for ourselves again this year. All right we'll go next to Pete Byrne. Hey Nico I, I know that uh, you you did as well as you could over the summer to to try and create situations where you could get swings in and throw and, and do whatever you could. But what has your preparation been like over the last, say, since Christmas in terms of getting ready? And how has it been different than normal? Yeah, so we haven't had um, as much time to get uh, live at bats. We came back a little bit later than we normally do. So a lot of machine work has been has been needed this year uh, because you don't see the balls coming at you at such a high rate of speed as often. So 
hitting a lot of machine uh, fastballs, hitting a lot of machine left-handed breaking balls and making sure that nothing catches us off guard um, come February 18th. We'll go next to Mark Skoll. And Nico, what kind of goals do you have for yourself? Obviously, your second team All-American, preseason All-American. What what kind of goals do you have for yourself this season? Uh, first and foremost, we want to host a regional. Um, that's been our goal as a senior class ever since we stepped foot here, is we want to host a regional, and we want to give ourselves the best uh, – opportunity possible to, to play in the supers so uh one, once you are hosting a regional and you've done everything you can and everyone's in, into the tournament it's really who's playing their best ball at that time so we want to get to that point and make sure that we're hot headed into the, the ncaa tournament and we will circle back to pete burn i actually have two for him claire if i could get him in here um first nico you talked about doing more machine work the last the last couple weeks were you able to do that in the team facility or did you have to go out on your own and find spots to do that? Yeah. Um, so the team facility prior to everyone coming back and us getting our, our COVID tests and stuff was shut down. So I wasn't able to use that facility despite being just 10 or 15 minutes away. So I've been needing to, or I've uh, needed to go out and find other facilities and find just independent people I know who have machines and stuff like that to, to get that work in. And then obviously, you know, you come into this with this season with some personal notoriety or preseason All-American, as, as we just heard. And obviously people are aware of your power. But but aside from your, your power, where do you think you need to improve the most this year to kind of take your game to an elite level? Yeah, so I think I need to put the ball in play at a higher rate. So I, I my one of my goals is I want to have a one to one walk to strikeout ratio. So if I can improve how often I put the ball in play, I think that it gives our team a better opportunity to win. And also I want to solidify myself, solidify myself as uh, a very good corner infielder. So I've been working on uh, lengthening myself at first base and being more agile and getting more balls and having softer hands when, when the infielders make a little bit less accurate throws. So I think those are two areas that I can improve to help us host a regional this year, which is our ultimate goal. Thanks. And we'll circle back to Mark's goal. Hi, Nico. Uh, obviously, you've gotten to know Coach Jared for a little over a year now. Uh, what do you like about him? What kind of foundation has he created that you think can lead to uh, you guys hosting a regional? And then uh, what have you thought about all the COVID protocols and dealing with all that while trying to play a college baseball season? Yeah, well, Tommy definitely touched on it. Uh, the biggest thing about Coach Jared is his energy. Uh, he brings it every day. Um, there's never a day where you walk in where you don't know that Coach Jared's engaged. Um, additionally, he, he's mine never stops working. Um, I'll be sitting at home watching a baseball game and I'll get a text from Coach Jarrett like, hey, did you see G-Man Choi stretch there? Like, I think that can be you and that needs to be you. And it's like, it never turns off for him. He's constantly engaged and uh, he works just as hard as any of us. So we can really respect that and, and give that effort level right back to him. Uh, as for the COVID protocols, I think the most difficult thing is off the field. Um, we have to keep our circles extremely small. I'm not able to see friends that I have around the university. I'm not able to get with my teammates and gather on a Sunday and watch football games. Uh, we're, we're keeping our circles so small to our immediate houses and our close contacts. And because of that, we're, we're missing out on uh, a lot of that team bonding and that stuff that goes on. So I think that makes the time we spend together on the field even more important. All right, and we have one more question from the chat. Being a local kid, how tough has it been to not have a home game since May of 2019? And how much are you looking forward to the home opener this season? Yeah, it's been difficult. Um, my family has been an awesome support system for me ever since I've come to school here. So uh, not having them at, at home games has been tough. And there are people uh, all around the community that reach out like, hey, like looking forward to seeing you play at home this year. Like, let me know if you're allowing fans and stuff like that. So that's been difficult for sure. All right, and we will wrap it up with you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right, thanks for everyone being on here. We're now gonna continue to the softball portion of this webinar. Head coach Deanna Gump will be with us momentarily. If you have a question for her, please raise your hand. Hello. Here, here we are, coach, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm excited. Awesome, all right. Uh, do you have an opening statement or would you like to go straight to questions? I, I actually would like to um, say a couple of things before we get started. Absolutely. The floor is yours. Great. Well, first of all, we're excited to get on the field next week it's here. And, um, you know, we had a great fall. We had a bunch of really committed student athletes who were willing to do whatever um, it took for us to stay on the field the whole time. And um, they've been amazing in their flexibility and the way that they just handle the situation that we're in right now. Um, so I'm very excited about this group. Also, um, I'm excited to see uh, them on the field again because we didn't lose a starter from last year. So we have our entire core back of our team. And it's gonna be really neat to see the identity form in the next few weeks to see what this team's all about. Our schedule obviously looks a little bit different. We have 38 conference games, uh, but it's still a really good schedule. We're playing five ranked teams so far, um, and that's preseason ranking. Um, so it's just, it's a great year. I can't believe we're getting started next week, but here we go. All right, your first question is gonna be from Pete Byrne. Hey coach, good to see you. Um, how, how different has your lead up to this season been than normal in that, I mean, usually you've got your routine, throwing, relays, hitting, pitching, all that stuff. How, how, how much less of that than normal have you been able to get through this year? And in addition, how much of your time would you say have you spent like just worrying about COVID related stuff as it pertains to travel, competing, all everything that goes into it? Yeah. Hi, Pete. Um, it, it was a bit different this year. I think the biggest thing is we, we were able to get to everything, but we've done it at a slower pace. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were all prepared for the level of playing that we needed to be at. So we took our time a, a little bit longer this year. So we're moving a little bit, um, just, just taking things a little bit slower and taking a little more time with everything to make sure we're ready. Now off the field with COVID, I mean, it takes up 50% of our day to make sure that we're ready to go, make sure the teams that we're playing are complying with our standards, making sure that we're prepared for the travel uh, because this team's traveling for the first, what, five weeks. So we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to put us in the very, very best position to play, to play those five first weeks. All right, your next question will be from Eric Lopez. Coach, uh, tell us a little bit more about the schedule, the process, what the, from the ACC's perspective, how you came up with 38 games and then how that affected you from a non-conference scheduling standpoint, especially in this unique year. Hi, Eric, yes, um, it took a lot of time. Um, the ACC mandated that we drop 10% of our schedule. So we knew we had to do that right away. And then what we had to figure out as a conference is how are we gonna get the most games we can possibly play, knowing that at least we're all on the same page with protocol, we're testing the exact same way, you know, we, we know our expectations and we're really doing everything we can to get games in. And that's why we changed uh, to the 38 games. So we're playing every single opponent four times, except for the first uh, pod series where we're playing two teams three times. So it's gonna be a lot of softball in one weekend. All right, your next question's coming via the chat. You're entering your 20th season as a head coach. How do you see things differently than you did in your very first season? <laughs> Completely differently. Uh, when I was, uh, I, the, I think the biggest change for me is the fact that I focus a lot more on relationships and I am enjoying it um, so much more. And I know that sounds really strange, um, but I sure love spending time with these girls and I'm not so worried about the scoreboard. Uh, I think what I've realized it kind of takes care of itself. And when you are putting a great group of people on the field who believe in the product that we have, um, it takes care of itself and it, it makes the game a lot more fun. And I, I really enjoy I really enjoy the time I get with these girls. All right, your next question is gonna be from Mark Skoll. Hey coach, sticking with the 20 year uh, theme, congratulations. Uh, 
what has it meant for you to coach at such a prestigious university for 20 seasons? Hi, Mark. Um, yeah, it's crazy. First of all, I don't know how it's been 20 years. It feels like 10. And I, if you would have asked me 20 years ago how long I'd be at Notre Dame, I probably would have said five, maybe 10 years if I'm lucky. Uh, and, you know, life experiences and things that happen just kind of shape, you know, your future and, and your days. And I had no idea that I would be sitting here today having this discussion with you um, 20 years later at Notre Dame, but I sure feel really proud, really honored. And um, it, it really is kind of mind blowing when you, when you kind of sit back and think about it, but I'm, I'm a pretty lucky girl and I sure do like what I'm doing. All right, your next question will be from Pete Byrne. Sticking with the 20 year theme in hindsight, was it difficult being hired as a 16 year old head coach? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, in all seriousness, having all your starters back, I mean, your team was ready to win last year. Um, does, does that make it in any way easier this year? The, the fact that you, you might need to lean on them more to just be ball players because you have to worry about stuff outside the diamond. Right. You know, it, you're right, Pete, and thank you. Uh, but the girls know, I think they're so prepared and know what to expect. And if we just stay flexible and we just say, you know what, whatever it is, we're taking it. Today's the day, like whatever today brings us, we're taking it. And I think if we stay with that mentality, I don't have a lot of worries. These girls have been, like I said, so committed um, to what we're doing. And I have such a strong belief in this team that I, I don't, I'm not worried. I just know that, you know, whatever the day brings, we're going to take it and we're going to make the best of it. Your next question will be from Mark Skoll. Coach, obviously, uh, you got a uh, your son now on campus uh, at, with Notre Dame baseball. How excited are you for him to start his journey? Obviously, he's always wanted to play at Notre Dame because you are the coach here. And then how often, obviously, it's going to be busy schedules for both of you. How often are you going to be able to check in on him and uh, watch him play? Well, he's so excited. I think he's extremely nervous, too, with it being his first season. Um, but last fall was a great start um, for his career. And I, again, you know, just the opportunity to be able to watch him even once in a while in college, I never thought I would have that. I never thought I would have the opportunity to ever see any games that my son played in. So how cool is it that I can finish up a double header over here or a single game over here, walk on over and maybe catch the last three innings of a ball game, uh, which I've done always, but now I have another reason to watch. I'll be watching 21. All right, we've got one more question from the chat. For years, you've all had a consistent coaching staff surrounding you. How important is that consistency in the role that your fellow coaches play? Well, I think if you know our staff, you know that um, my staff is everything to me. Uh, they, they played for me, um, they've been with me. Uh, you know, Chris has been with me for all 20 years. Lizzie's been with me for 16 of the 20. Um, Jamie has, I've known her since the first day I stepped here at Notre Dame when she was coaching at Western Michigan. And, um, you know, it's, it's just so much more than coaching, it's family. And we, we feel it, we believe it, we trust each other. Uh, you know, we know kind of how each other ticks. We know the good days, the bad days, um, but being with them makes everything always a little bit better. All right, your last question is also from the chat. You haven't played a home game since 2019. How excited are you all to be back at home this season come March? I cannot wait. I can't wait till that sun is shining and this frost and freeze is out of here and we can just get on the field and have an opponent at home. It's going to be the best day um, when, that first, when that first opponent comes to Melissa Cook Stadium and these girls get to play at home. They, they have worked so hard to get to that point. I cannot wait. All right, that's all we have for you. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks so much. Coming up next for the softball team will be infielder Sarah Gens. So if you have a question for Sarah, please raise your hand and she'll be with us momentarily. All right, and we'll continue on with Sarah again. Sarah, are you ready to go? I am. 
All right, your first question will be from Mark Skoll. Hi, Sarah. Uh, how excited are you that the softball season is right around the corner starting next week? And uh, how excited are you just to get out there and start playing again? Well, we're all so excited. I think this is the longest stretch without a game that any of us have had in our softball careers. So we're all just, we've worked so hard, as Coach said, um, throughout the summer and throughout last fall over this winter break. So we're all just incredibly excited next week to get out there and, yeah, finally start playing some games. All right, we'll circle back to Mark Skoll. Uh, what, uh, what are your goals individually and then for the team this season? Yeah, I think individually my goal is just to support the team, um, first and foremost. Um, as a team, since I've been at Notre Dame, uh, my class's goals have been to um, win an ACC championship and make it to the Women's College World Series. So we're as committed to, to those goals as we ever have been. Um, I think individually to help get get the team to that level. Um, I just need to be really consistent offensively, um, coming up big in big situations and hitting the ball well with runners in scoring positions. Um, and then defensively, just staying strong, being consistent. Um, I think those are things that'll really help the team and yeah, get us to where we need to be. Your next question will be from Pete Byrne. Hey, hey, uh, Coach mentioned that you pretty much have your entire starting lineup back from a year ago, which which I know would be an advent an ad advantage to you in any year. Uh, do you think it's perhaps even more so in a season like this, where there's less prep time and the off season's been out of out of the ordinary and everything that's gone into to dealing with this pandemic? Do you feel like having a nucleus of players that was has basically been together for as long as you have is is that maybe more helpful than normal? I think it could be. I think we've also done a great job of incorporating, you know, current freshmen um, into everything and and the current sophomores freshmen last year who felt like they really couldn't get um, get, get going in the season. Um, I think we've done a great job of incorporating everyone and getting everyone up to speed getting everyone um, going as a unit. But um, yeah, sure, for sure. I think it, it, it helps a lot, especially with team chemistry. Um, you know, with COVID protocols, it's been hard to um, yeah, bond, kind of get chemistry going. Um, so it definitely helps that um, a lot of us um, have been playing together now for a while. Your next question is going to come via the chat. Going off of what you said that you have, this is probably the longest stretch you haven't played a game. How have you and the team stayed focused on returning to the field this season? Yeah, I think we all, you know, the moment we found out last year that um, it, it wasn't going to happen, that COVID was shutting us down, we all looked to this year. We all kind of said, okay, what's next? How, how can we prepare for the 2021 season? Um, so we all were incredibly committed over the summer, and especially during the fall, um, you know, putting in the work, putting in extra work, going one more um, than we normally would. Um, it helps that, you know, even though we haven't played a game in so long, we have one of the best staffs, I think, in the country so to see pitching like that every day um, has been incred incredibly helpful to us as hitters um, so I think we yeah it's been a while without a game but it's been you know yesterday that I hit off of some of the best pitchers in the country so um, I think we're ready and, and and we're talented we're gritty and we're ready to go another question from the chat Sarah you were just named captain this season what does that title mean to you and what did it feel like to earn that honor it's really surreal. I feel incredibly lucky. Um, my goal is just to go out every day and, and feel like I've earned that trust from my teammates and my coaches. Um, I feel incredibly blessed and honored. And um, yeah, I think Abby, Alexis and I are doing everything we can to, to cultivate a great atmosphere on and off the team um, to make sure, you know, we get team chemistry going. Like I said earlier, it's it's been difficult with COVID protocols, but we've kind of had to think outside the box of ways to get everyone included. And yeah, I think on the field, all three of us are vocal. We feel strong and confident in ourselves and in our teammates um, and all of our abilities to get the job done. So yeah, incredible. One of the best moments of my life, I think. All right, your final question will also be from the chat. After more than a year since the last home game, what are you most looking forward to about the idea of playing at home this year? Oh man, I think just to walk out and represent Notre Dame softball. Um, we're not sure what fans are going to look like yet. Hopefully we have some people in the audience. It's my senior season, so I'm hoping to look up in the stands and see some family members there too. 
Um, but yeah, just to go out, have the home field advantage, um, be in the place that we've been at at Melissa Cook Stadium for four years and have Irish on our chest, I think will just be the most incredible feeling. All right, thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you. Coming up next will be pitcher Peyton Tidd. If you have a question for Peyton, please raise your hand. And we'll keep it rolling with pitcher Peyton Tidd. Peyton, you ready for questions? Yes. All right, your first question will be from Mark Skoll. Hi, Peyton, two questions for you. First off, just how excited are you that the season is just next week, right around the corner, and that you can finally play some softball again? And then number two, what are your goals for yourself and for the team this season? Uh, yeah, I'm incredibly excited to get playing. I mean, we've been off for so long that it's like everyone's so antsy, you know, to like get playing because we just haven't been in that competitive environment in a while. Um, but in terms of goals, for me, I just I want to compete. I want to compete with my team and um, win an ACC championship, uh, go to a Super Regional. I think as a team, we've talked about um, how we just want to get to that Super Regional, and that's one of our biggest goals that we have this season. All right, your next question will be from the chat. You and Alexis Holloway have combined to be a great tandem on the mound. How do you feel like you complement each other's games? Um, I think me and Alexis Holloway are, we're like two, like two people in one brain. Like we know each other's strengths and I think we complement each other in terms of her style of pitching and my style of pitching are very different. And so when she's pitching um, and I get put in or vice versa, um, I think that that's a whole new set of pitches that the hitters are looking at. And I think that for me and Alexis, um, we're very, um, good friends so therefore we're very good at like supporting each other and telling each other hey like um, I think you could get better at this and we're very good at communication in that type of setting. Next question is also from the chat. You've mentioned it uh, Sarah and coach mentioned it. It's been the longest time you have spent without playing softball. How did your team stay focused on returning the field to the field this season? I think that um, when our season got canceled last year we were um, kind of all over the place and I think that the captains as long as uh, with along with the coaching staff um, really honed us in and like we need to prepare our fundamentals and work on ourselves in the off season. and then when we got here in the fall um, we worked a lot on um, the fundamentals of our game and how we were going to prepare for the season and then when we got here earlier in the winter we just wanted to compete we worked um, with our we worked in different game settings and different things. And it was really nice to um, see some hitters since I haven't seen hitters in a while and just to compete with my teammates and then get ready for the season. All right, your next question will be coming from the chat. Entering your junior season, how has your mentality, mentality on the mound changed since you were a freshman? I guess I'm just more confident, um, but my mentality hasn't changed. I just want to compete. I want to compete with my teammates and help with whatever I can. Uh, I just want to be the person that has my teammates back when they need it the most. All right. And your final question will be via the chat. After more than a year since your last home game, what are you most looking forward to about the idea of playing at home this season? I'm so excited to play at home. I, I love just running out the field with the song in the background or just looking up in the stands and hopefully seeing fans this year but most importantly just having that nd on my chest and representing my school and myself um, and my teammates on that field all right thank you so much Peyton